Welcome back to West Virginia Total Resource. We're going to answer the billion dollar question everyone's asking. What will the 2024 housing market hold for us? By answer the question, you mean come at it from different angles, right? Precisely. We will answer it to the best of our predictability using a combination of data, expert predictions, and our own observations, of course. If like many people out there, you're on the fence about buying or selling in the current market, this video will help you identify some key metrics to watch or questions to ask. Right, and it can be a good or bad time to purchase for anyone, regardless of what the market is doing. Yeah. But I think a lot of people have been worried that the sky might be falling this year especially. There are a lot of reasons for this, and when we break it down, there are a lot of conflicting pressures in the market that can make it kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. We can't predict the future. If we could, we'd probably own YouTube and not be making videos. I'd probably still be making videos. I'd probably just be watching your videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not fortune tellers yet. We'll talk about the different forces and how they may impact us going into 2024. Let's look back for a moment before we dive forward. The market has been a big game of tug of war for the last few years with much bigger movement in both directions. Yeah, while many news outlets and economists have been predicting another housing crash for the last few years, here we are headed into 2024 with prices still trending up. Oh, the infamous housing bubble. Some say we're due for a correction. A burst could mean a steep drop in prices. Well, a steep drop in prices isn't likely. The steep drop that is driving the market is a drop in homes available and sales. We're talking 15 to 30% less homes in certain months compared to 2022, which was already a year of low inventory. Less people are putting their homes up for sale, leading to continued competition for the few homes available. Think toilet paper in 2020 or eggs in 2022, just larger and ongoing. Yep. The time it takes to sell a home has been going up, partly because some homes across the DMV and the country continue to list at shoot for the moon pricing, as opposed to pricing that buyers can stomach with the current interest rate. Yeah, we all know what people think when they see those prices. Mm -hmm. Hear it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's look at some expert predictions for the upcoming year. Analyst Meredith Whitney has a bold prophecy, a decrease in housing prices and an increase in supply starting in 2024. She calls it the silver tsunami, baby boomers downsizing. One reason we might want to pay attention to Meredith is that she accurately predicted the 2008 housing recession. This trend will be one to watch closely. According to AARP, those over 50 years old own a whopping 70% of U.S. homes, and Meredith predicts that over half are looking to downsize. With over 30 million units expected on the market, this could be huge at solving the inventory drought. Seriously. But let's not get too hopeful about getting back to a buyer's market yet, because even with an influx of homes, we're still expected to remain in a seller's market. Just a more balanced version like what we saw in 2018. I'm going to go ahead and predict that Meredith will not be correct. <laughs> well, I do think you can predict the so. <laughs> Here's some other <laughs> stats that really throw a wrench in that prediction. According to Matthew Gardner, a real estate chief economist, over 80% of homeowners with a mortgage have a rate of 5% or lower. Now, while people might think that a lot of baby boomers aren't in this category or don't have a mortgage, according to Bloomberg as a whole, less than 40% of homeowners own their home outright. Okay. In other words, they don't have a mortgage. And this figure includes all age groups. So okay. there's still a lot of baby boomers out there that have a mortgage to pay. Mm -hmm. And a very low interest rate. And a very low interest rate, <laughs> yep. <laughs> while some may want to sell, giving up that low rate is pretty hard these days without a major life change pushing you to do so. Correct. And back to Matthew Gardner's predictions, he's not expecting major changes in interest rates. Many, including him, predicted rates to fall faster in 2023, but the Fed's efforts to combat inflation led to much higher rates than expected. Gardner expects interest rates to drop this year, but not to go below 6%. While that's not as low as some people are hoping, 6% sounds amazing compared to the 8% that we were faced with earlier this year. Gardner also predicts a moderate rise in listing activity, which sounds more plausible than the silver tsunami. As nice as it is to hope that a wave of homes will be coming up for sale, that would be nice. Yeah. Gardner also predicts that the problem with housing affordability will get worse because prices aren't likely to go down, though they may have a more moderate increase of only 1%. To put this number in perspective, homes typically appreciate between 3 to 5% a year. Between 2020 and 2022, however, we experienced roughly 10% appreciation per year, leading home prices to skyrocket. Even if home prices stayed the same in 2024 or dropped a little, they would still be much higher when we compared it to expected pricing a few years ago. Yeah. If you found this video helpful so far, do us a favor and like and subscribe. Or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover, put them in the comments. Many buyers are hopeful about the market calming down in the next few years. 
but with how fiery it's hot it's been, it will take a longer period of time or a series of major events to really slow down demand. And as we see in retrospect, some major events like the 2020 pandemic, for example, just made things worse. Speaking of worsening conditions, mortgage rates will be the wild card here. If they go down 1% or more, we expect millions of buyers to enter the market. Some say up to 5 million buyers per 1% decrease in rates. If this happens, we may be looking at another spring with 10 to 20 offers for home and a lot of waived inspections. This will be great for sellers, but will really hurt buyers who are already facing so many barriers to purchasing. On the flip side, if rates maintain or go up again, this will mean less potential buyers for the homes that are available. The buyers willing and able to engage in this market will benefit from more protections and a little more breathing room in the process. I much prefer a balanced market. A lot of people falsely assume that a crazy real estate market is great for realtors, but it's just added stress and typically more work overall. For a listing, there are more calls and offers to field, exponentially more follow-up work. For buyers, there's more of a rush to get into a home quickly, we're in a hurry, we're writing a higher number of offers. Not ideal, but we can help you navigate any kind of market and analyze your specific situation to see if buying or selling is the right move at that time. Plus, we can help you find opportunities that make sense in all kinds of markets, even if it seems crazy out there. It's really just about analyzing the factors and sometimes you get surprised. All right, we've talked about what the experts think. What do you think will happen in 2024? Ooh. Well, I think rates will stay steady in the high sixes to the low sevens for a couple of months. I think they will go down more at some point in 2024, but probably not until the end of spring or the beginning of summer. Mm -hmm. I just don't envision the Fed lowering rates anytime soon until inflation has cooled for a longer period of time. And so the trickle down of how that impacts mortgage rates is stalled as well. It's a big shift to move. Mm -hmm. I agree. I don't think we'll see a sharp dip anytime soon. Rates will fluctuate. There may be some weeks where they float down to a more appealing place, but trying to time this up with also finding the right home is nearly impossible. Your best bet is to lock in at a rate and see if you can float down if the rates improve while you're under contract. And as for sellers, honestly, your best bet is probably getting your house up as soon as possible and asking for a rent back mm -hmm. of 30 to 60 days to get you the house you want during that time and an even better interest rate more likely during that time period, barring crazy world events. Yeah. And don't forget when you're looking at those rates, you have an equity position in your home that's gonna make your next loan likely a little bit smaller. I mean, the numbers just really matter here. So don't let one factor scare you away from even having the conversation about it. Right. I do think home prices across the board will continue to go up because the sales volume and inventory won't go up enough to meet demand. The trend I've seen for the last several years is that people who waited to buy ended up paying more for their homes or just not even getting into the market at all and wishing that they had. And I suspect that trend's gonna continue, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Even if rates go down, competition will go up. Normalizing can look very different for specific areas of the country, but the most important thing to keep in mind is that one data factor alone should not be a deciding factor for your real estate plans. Real estate headlines for decades have predicted crashes, lack of affordability, and general doom and gloom. This guy is falling. Oh, yeah. Chicken little, get out of here. What we know looking back is that after major shifts come recovery. It's just hard to tell what part of the recovery cycle we're in until we're able to look back. 2023 was a much stronger year than anyone expected. So we may look back at the second half of 2022 when interest rates first spiked and see that the true recession and housing correction that we're all so afraid of happened at that point in the past. Yeah. Only time will tell, but you can be sure that we will be keeping our finger on the pulse and guiding our clients to making the best possible decisions that they can make with the data available to us. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, staying informed and cautious is key. The market might favor sellers, but opportunities are always around. See you next time on West Virginia Total Resource.